In the previous lecture, you learned how to work with numbers and do some math with JavaScript. You also learned how to create random numbers. I think you are ready for a coding challenge. In this challenge, you are going to build an interactive random number generator. By saying interactive, I mean it should collect a number from a user, then generate a random number from one up to the user's provided number. To get started with this coding challenge, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript Numbers. And then open the index.html file using Google Chrome. In the index.html file, remember to link random number challenge.js file. Then in the random number challenge.js file, you'll find step by step instructions for what you'll need to do. You can definitely make use of what you have learned so far to complete this challenge. First, you'll need to collect user input, then convert that input from a string to a number. This will be the maximum random number in the range of numbers starting from 1. Then use the math.random method to create a random number using the maximum number provided by the user. Finally, you'll create a message displaying the random number and a maximum number. You can use any method you want to display the message. For instance, you can display in the console, write to the page, or display with an alert. It is totally up to you. The goal is to get your program to work similar to this. Hopefully you were able to manage all the steps successfully. If not, that's okay. Now I'll show you how I did it. In the random number challenge.js file, the first step is collecting a number from a user. So I'll start by creating a variable named input max to store the value returned by a prompt dialog that asks, please provide a number. You learn that the prompt method returns a string, even if someone types a number into the dialog box. So the value of input max needed to be converted into a number type. I'll use the parse int method to do that. And I store the number value in a variable named max number to represent the maximum possible random number. Next, I'll create a variable named rand number to store the generated random number. I'll generate the random number like this. Math.random. This will return random number from 0 up to but not including 1 with decimal values. I'll multiply this by max number. Now this will return random number from 0 up to but not including max number, but still with decimal values. Then I'll pass this return random number to math.floor. And this will return random integer number from 0 up to, but not including the max number. But my goal is to generate random number from 1 up to and including the max number. So I'll add 1 to the end to make sure that I get a number from 1 up to including the max number. Finally, I'll display a message in the console including the generated random number and a maximum number user typed in. I'll type a set of backticks to make a template literal. Then type the message Here I made use of string interpolation to insert the value of rand number and the max number value supplied by the user. Let's see how it works. I'll save the chains. Refresh the page. The prompt dialog appears. I'll type the number 5. Click OK. In the console, I see the message 2 is a random number between 1 and 5. I'll refresh the page and try another number. Let's say 50. That displays the message 19 is a random number between 1 and 50. Good. I'll refresh the page again and try one more number. Let's say 10,000. Click OK. That displays the message 3,605 is a random number between 1 and 10,000. Now there's one more thing we need to improve, and that is, this random number generator works as expected only if the user supplies a number. And it doesn't work properly if the input is something like the word 5, or if the input field is left blank. For example, I'll refresh the page. 
And this time I'll type the word five. Click OK. In the console, notice the NAN value. It says NAN is a random number between one and the NAN. I'll refresh the page again. And this time I'll click OK without typing anything. In the console, again the NAN value. It says NAN is a random number between one and the NAN. Earlier you learned that NAN stands for not a number. And it's JavaScript's way of saying that it can't find a number. NAN is often the result of an incorrect mathematical operation. In this case, the parseInt method can't convert a string of letters or any empty string into a number that can be used here in math.random times max number. So for the random number generator, it would be a good idea to first check if the input supplied by the user is a number. If it is, then generate a random number and display the message in the console. If it's not a number, then display a message like, please provide a number value and try again. To make this happen, I need to use a conditional statement which you learned about in a previous lecture. A conditional statement can make a program react to different situations. I'll start with an if statement and end it with an else clause. Now the question is, what should be the condition in this case? Remember, a condition evaluates to either true or false. If the condition is true, the code in this block will be executed. If the condition is false, the code in this else clause is executed. So in this condition, I can check the values stored in max number. Then I'll move these two lines of codes, which is responsible for generating random number and displaying a message into this block. So this block of code means that if max number is a true number value that I can use in my program, then generate a random number with it and display a message in the console. NAN or not a number is a value that is always evaluates to false. If the value of max number is NAN, then the condition evaluates to false and the code in the else clause runs instead. So here in the else clause, I'll display the message, please provide a number and try again in the console. Now I'll save the change. Refresh the page. The prompt dialog appears and this time I'll type the word 5. Click OK. The word 5 cannot be parsed to a number so the console displays please provide a number and try again. I'll refresh the page. And this time I click OK without typing anything. And I get the same message. I'll refresh the page again. And this time I'll type the number 100. Click OK. The console displays 20 is a random number between 1 and 100. Perfect. Now I have another challenge for you. To take this challenge even further, please try to adjust the program so that it accepts two numbers from a user, a minimum number and a maximum number, and then generates a random number from the minimum number to the maximum number. For example, a number that's at least 100 but no bigger than 200. So good luck, have fun, and remember, practice makes perfect. In the next section, I'll share my solution with you. All right, hopefully you were able to manage. If not, that's okay. Now I'll show you how I did it. The program should ask for two numbers and generate a random number between the two. First, I need to ask for another input. I'll create a variable named input min to store the value returned by the prompt dialog that asks, please provide your smallest number. Then update the input max message to, please provide your biggest number. The string value stored in input min also needs to be converted into a number type. I'll store that number value in a variable named min number. I'll again use the parse int method to convert the string to an integer. The variable min number represents the smallest possible random number. So now I need to update how the random number gets generated. For example, instead of being a number from one to the value stored in max number, it needs to generate a number from min number to max number. To make this happen, I'll update the number being multiplied by math.random like this. I'll subtract the min number from max number and add 1 to it. 
and then add the min number to the return value of math.floor. So this part generates a random number from 0 to the difference between the biggest and smallest number plus 1. For example, if I want a random number from 10 to 25, this part will generate a random number from 0 up to but not including 16, because 25 minus 10 is 15 and plus 1 is 16. By passing that value to math.floor, I'll get a random number from 0 to 15. Then I add the smallest number, in this case it's 10, which produces the number from 10 to 25. Now don't worry at all if the math for generating random numbers still seems confusing. At least now you have an equation that does the math for you. Next, I'll update the random number console message by inserting the value of the min number variable into the string. So I'll replace this one with the value of min number variable like this. Dollar sign, curly braces, and min number. And I'll also update the console message in the else clause too. Sorry, you need to provide two numbers and try again. Finally, I'll update the condition in the if statement. This time I need to check if the value stored in min number and the value stored in max number is a true number. In other words, make sure that both are not nan or not a number. I'll use the logical and operator like this. If even one of these is not a number, the entire condition evaluates to false and the code in the else clause runs. Okay, let's see how this works now. I'll save the chains, refresh the page, I'll type 5 for the smallest number, click OK, and type 10 for the biggest number. The console displays the message, 8 is a random number between 5 and 10. I'll refresh the page again, this time I'll type the word 6 for the smallest number, click OK, and type 20 for the biggest number, click OK. The console displays the message, sorry you need to provide two numbers and try again. Good! To practice more with numbers and math, remember to check out other lectures in this playlist. And remember, I'm here to help, so if you have any questions about anything covered in this lecture, please feel free to ask in the comment section below.